We'll call the West Ada School Board meeting to order. First item up is the Pledge of Allegiance. Everybody stand, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You skipped the comma. I know. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> You're going to think about it every time now about skipping that comma. There's no comma there. Um, and I saw English, I think probably an English teacher in the room when I said that, nod her head like, yep, I, <laughs> it was probably where I got it from. Um, all right, so this morning um, we have the special session meeting and we have on the consent agenda some approvals for um, some uh, regional director, math coordinator, communication liaison, and the Idaho Fine Arts Sale. And since it's on the consent agenda, but since we have staff here, I thought maybe... Uh, one of you would like to give just a little synopsis of who's here with us and sure. the position. And oh, sure. can we, oh. oh, sorry, that's right. There's no action for that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, before we do that, though, we need to vote on the amended agenda. So I would need a motion to adopt the amended agenda from someone on the board. I would move that we adopt the amended agenda. Thank you. Trustee Buffy, is there a second? I'll second. It's been moved in by Trustee Buffy and seconded by Trustee Kofelt that we approve the or adopt the amended agenda. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carries five to zero. All right, now uh, is it, and we were good. Okay. okay. Um, now, Mr. Heller, is it you? Yeah. All right. Thank you. So we are uh, uh, bringing forward today um, a recommendation for region director, and this region director will be for the East Region. Um, replaces Marcus Myers, who's moving into chief academic officer, which was approved the other night. Uh, the executive team went through the interview process. Um, Earlier, just this week, uh, it feels like a long time ago. Um, and uh, um, we're happy to bring forward Lisa Hale as our recommendation for East Region Director. Lisa has been an administrator in our district um, for 17 years, uh, Brilliant High as an assistant principal, and then she's been at Desert Sage Elementary for the past 10 years. I believe she's been in our district for 27, 27 years, um, taught at Meridian High as a science teacher, and then again, assistant principal and principal at Desert State for the past 10. And uh, we really feel like Lisa's going to be a great fit for the East region in terms of her skills, the knowledge that she's had to, had to build over the last 10 years at Desert Sage will really fit well with the East region needs. And so we're happy to bring her forward today for your uh, approval. Thank you. Lisa, I'm going to call on you in just a sec, but I have to acknowledge the impressiveness of Brett to pull all of that information off about you on the fly. <laughs> We've known each other for a while. <laughs> well, welcome. Do you want to say a little Thank bit? Thank you. Um, I do this correctly. Madam Chair, Trustees, and Superintendent Bob, uh, thanks. I am so excited. And again, I've been part of the Meridian School District for a really long time, and it's a place that I really love to call home. Um, it is a, a school district I feel is always progressive and always moving forward, and at the forefront is always, are, we're always thinking about kids and their achievement. And so uh, I look forward to the opportunities that I have to work for the East Region and then to work with all of these folks and with you as your partner in our mission and vision. So thank you so much. I appreciate being here and working with people that I've worked with before. And so it'll be, it'll be a wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Trustees, any comments? Trustee Kofelt? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just calling on him. Yes, well, I always do. I got to pipe in. No, congratulations. Thank um, you. you know, I, I said the other night when we, when we approved some other appointments that um, I'm really excited about the new leadership team and and what's in store for us and uh, yesterday just really reinforced that for me kind of getting to know folks on another level and so I'm excited to get to know you a little better today and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He always says it best that's why I just call it. <laughs> so. Just defer to the one that does the group that does the job well and then you're, you'll make them go first. That's right. <laughs> yeah. You just know put, put people in the light to shine right? So. Thank you so much. Yeah well thank you and um, welcome. We'll make the approval here in a minute. So with that, is there any other discussion? 
Then bottom uh, check. Oh, I have a couple things. Um, I don't think we saw the recommendation, the names for the math coordinator or the communication liaison. Oh, uh, I, uh, I might have missed that. So, uh, math coordinator recommendation is Patricia Vandenberg. That should have been addressed. I apologize. The community uh, liaison recommendation is Nicole Shepherds. Patricia Vandenberg comes from, uh, she's a math teacher in California. A little bit on her resume, she uh, is, has worked for CPM, uh, which is uh, part of the math curriculum at Warner I mean, She's been a trainer, a national speaker, um, currently serves as a teacher, um, and actually was the presenter for CPM when they came out and uh, we went through the textbook adoption process. I think she's going to be a huge asset to our district, has a great vision of where we can go with mathematics. Um, and, uh, and she's going to be, and that, that position is a result of splitting up the um, career to the curriculum position, which was science and math, uh, with a large focus on both science and math, especially if we move into next generation science standards, things like that. We felt like it would be appropriate to have a science person and a math person. Um, Mr. Stoker chose to, to go down the science road, and so uh, that opened up that position. Great. Um, communications liaison, uh, and that's really uh, the community, community liaison position, and, and that community liaison position is uh, Nicole Shepherds, who served as an assistant principal uh, over at Centennial High School. She's done a fabulous job um, just engaging in the community, uh, um, really proactively creating. Uh, I, I think the, the best part of her interview was her ability to create a story rather than just react to a story. Um, and uh, I think she'll, she'll bring a positive light to, uh, to West Data, to uh, Ford, and, and really be a, a positive liaison to her. I might add on that one for board purposes too, because one of the things that we've been really trying to do is make sure that the board is aware of community or events that West State is doing in their areas and be involved and be invited. And there's never been somebody that actually manages that. And that's one of the things that she's going to be able to do to make sure that we get a better connection to our areas. So she'll reach out to you guys individually on different events in your area. And not just, um, again, as I said earlier, not just reacting to some of those events, but really creating events for all of us to be able to attend and celebrate some of the great things going on in our schools. Thank you. Madam Chair, one other thing. Go for it. I was going to bring it up if you didn't. Okay. We, we, did, we touched everything else. I thought we should just touch the fourth one. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I was just going to ask for that one to be moved to discussion and action, or we can have okay. discussion that way, however you want to handle that. No, let's do that. So I'll uh, need a... So <coughs> for... While we're still figuring out exactly how this works, we're just going to follow the standard process we've been following, which is we need a motion and a second to move it to discussion and action, and then we can adopt the rest of the consent agenda. So um, with that, I would open it up for motions. Madam Chair, I would move that we move consent agenda item number four to discussion and action. Okay. Is there a second? So the motion is that we will move consent agenda item number four to discussion item number two and action item number two. It's been moved by Trustee Ozuna and seconded by Trustee Kloppenstein. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries five to zero. I would entertain a motion uh, for the rest of the consent agenda. Madam Chair, I would move that we approve the consent agenda. But items one through three. Okay. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded, moved by Trustee Buffy and seconded by Trustee Kofelt that we adopt items one through three of the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carries five to zero. All right. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Welcome. <laughs> We'll move into um, the first discussion item, which is policy review committee. And uh, we had a conversation in our strategic retreat yesterday about setting up a more formalized policy review committee and process. And we're going to work through some details on that. Um, but in the short term, uh, and also maybe a little piloting, right, of the process, uh, the administration asked to have a couple trustees, so just two, um, be part of the policy review committee for three or four policies that we need to do um, 
in the next month or so. And so um, just because it's nice to do this stuff in the formal, wanted to have a formal board, any discussion on that first, but then in the action, um, would ask for two trustees to um, volunteer their time in addition to the board meetings and other work to help shape these policies. And Mr. Heller, can you remind us the policies that we were talking about? Well, Title IX will be a, a big um, focus. Um, we will also, we do want to look at our um, an academic freedom, controversial issues policy, kind of review what we currently have and review some opportunities to add to that policy. Um, look a little bit at maybe the patron grievance policy and what was the uh, uh, donations, donations, the donations, the donations, the donations around how we uh, keep the donations. And what that was okay. Can we add a fourth, our fifth one in there? We had the communications policy that um, Ms. Jackson put together, and it would be good to have that one in there. So, there's two of them. So, okay. is there any discussion? All right. Then, oh, go ahead. I was, I was going to say that I'm. I'm interested in participating. I'm just worried about workload. Okay. Um, with my, my job right now is kind of inflex, not really flexible, so that's the only thing I worry about, um, depending on what my meetings are. Maybe would you be able to give us a little bit of an idea of what the time commitment will be and what you're thinking? I think, I think there may be a fairly heavy time commitment initially, but I, I'm also, I think we talked a lot about being willing to run that committee. Um, Late, later in the day, into the into the work day, even you know, early evening, if that would be better um, for for trustees, so it doesn't have to be during our work day to run those committees. So um, I think as we, if you look into Title IX for specifically, that policy is going to take a fairly good amount of time to really talk about what we want to do to make sure we're meeting the new federal guidelines. So I do worry it's going to be some heavy lifting, especially initially on some of these policies we're bringing up. Um, I would like to get a first meeting as early as probably next week with the group, probably do that in the evening, early evening, five or six o'clock um, type of thing. Um, probably spend a couple hours next week at least getting our feet under us in terms of the policies we're trying to take care of in the short term. Um, and then probably there'll be some <coughs> offline work for the policy committee to review things, um, come back with some recommendations. Um, but I do think within the next few weeks, we're probably gonna spend a few hours a week meeting as a committee together, um, plus some offline work. Um, <clears throat> much like um, Sheena, I, I'm interested in it over the next, and I had shared this with uh, Chair, Chairwoman Johnson, uh, over the next few months, I'm going to be out of state a lot. And um, if it's something that can be done, not disruptively, but someone can call in or Zoom or something, then then <clears throat> that can definitely work. But if it's in person, that might be a bit challenging for me. I don't think we can handle it by doing some remoting with uh, folks. In yeah. Benefits of COVID. Yeah. <laughs> We've gotten very good at that. Yeah. Good. Madam Chair, I know I volunteered yesterday to help with this however possible. I'm also completely happy to not if there's anybody else that wants to jump in and help. So. I wanted to ask a question of the trustees. There's what now six policies. Would you would it be worthwhile to split them maybe and do a couple trustees so that there's that split splits the workload a little bit? We have four trustees that are willing to do that. Yes, I think that'd be great. Is there any preferences um, on uh, policy specifically? Maybe that's what we can talk about a little in discussion. I, I'm interested in Title IX and patron grievance. I have a lot of experience with that process. We all do. <laughs> <laughs> I met for my yeah. previous life. So. <laughs> <laughs> Any other thoughts? Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm fine fitting in wherever, where there, there, there's the need on it. So, all right. Well, if we were to split it like that, maybe there would be two motions. One would be for two trustees under certain policy names, and then two trustees on the other ones. So, um, just heads up for the motion time making, if that's the path you guys want to take. Um, I will not be volunteering for the policy review committee. <laughs> I think uh, I think that's a good spot not for the chair to be. So, um, is there any other discussion? 
You're good. I, I, oh. You're fine. Um, any other discussion? All right, we'll move to the second action item, which is, or sorry, second discussion item, which is the to approve the amendment for the Idaho Fine Arts School. And um, maybe, is it Mr. Gillen? Yes. Why don't you maybe just give us an overview of what ha what's going on and what's happened there? Yeah, thank you. Madam Chair, Trustees, Superintendent Bob. So as you know, we had the IFA land sale under contract, um, but during the inspection period. So during the inspection period, they did review um, the building, did their due diligence. Uh, during that, they identified a couple of components um, where they were asking for price sale price adjustments. So they identified repairs to the building that they felt were really the responsibility of the seller. And then they identified some structural changes that they're going to make to the building um, to make it usable for them. We looked at both of those. Um, they had provided basically an, an adjusted price point. We came back with a price point that was essentially accounting for the items that were the seller's inspection items that they noted as repairs. So the ideas of the responsibility of the seller. Nothing really structurally related that they had requested. We, we didn't come back with a price point for that. Um, and so essentially what you see embedded in this new adjusted price, the 4.83, um, is a reduction for the items they noted in the inspection that was specifically associated with the seller. Um, as part of the agreement associated with reducing the price, we also then said that the earnest money would have to go hard, so it would be non-refundable, and um, that all the other contingencies and inspections would be made. So that's what you see in the amendment before you. That's the adjusted dollar. Did I catch all that correctly? Yeah, I think, I, I think the other thing to note is that when we were doing that analysis and we come back to the um, buyers with, we did do a pretty uh, deep look into current sales and comparables on price per square foot and things like that. And we are still very, very satisfied at that at the rate that we're getting. It's, it's very competitive in the market and on the top end of all, all sales. And then the other piece of uh, releasing the contingencies and and releasing the earnest money is that they're going to continue forward to closing on it before August 16th. So this this will close very quickly now in the next 30 days. Yes, Thank you. Is there any questions? Trustee Ozuna. Thank you. Did the original sales contract have a contingency around the results of the inspection? Madam Chair, trustees. Um, so they had the opportunity, as part of the sales, they had the opportunity to walk through and do an inspection of the building. They hadn't necessarily identified everything as of yet. That was part of the inspection period we gave them. Okay. But it was the terms were subject to whatever might come out of the inspection. Okay. Any other questions? And I'm assuming students get to stay as long as they need to until they can transfer to the new building. Madam Chair and Trustees, we do have a, a separate lease agreement with them and a plan for that. So our expectation is that we have it ready in time to be able to use the building that's open in January and we'll continue to monitor the IFS construction progress. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? All right, seeing none, we'll move into the action portion of the agenda. And the first action item up is the policy review committee uh, to entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. <laughs> Trustee Buffy. I'll move that we appoint Trustee Rusty and Trustee Buffy to the policy committee for policy review committee for the policies Title IX, patron grievance, and donation policy. <laughs> Is there a second? A second. <laughs> it's been moved. Uh, by Trustee Buffy and seconded by Trustee Kloppenstein that the Title IX patron grievance and donation policy be uh, supported and, and uh, by Trustee Buffy and Trustee Kofelt. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carries five to zero. We still have three policies left. The donations? Was that correct? Uh, that was lumped in. Uh, yeah. So it should be two. Two left, right? There's two communication two, policies. Two communication oh, policies. Two and so, policies. yeah. And then one. And then the... Academic freedom. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So and two. there is also... It is also okay to add policies to their oh. plate in the motions. Just saying. 
<laughs> that policy is the who's plate. <laughs> the motion that just passed. <laughs> uh, I, I did not recall when you were interested in. Um, time commitment is, I have to okay. delay it, push it into August. Is that reasonable? I think. The concern with the academic freedom, like, well, both of them, the timeline and academic freedom, are that they're very, we really would like to get something in place by the time school starts. And yeah, that's, they're pretty, pretty critical, especially the academic freedom, because we need to pull some of that language out of the negotiated agreement with the understanding that we wouldn't have some updated policy in place. I'd be Mr. Able to volunteer, I just wouldn't be able to do it next week. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Heller, do you need two, or could you have? Oh, one or two is fine. Okay. One two. Okay. Thank you. Well, Did we not it? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's like this. <laughs> so, um, motion is in order. Madam Chair. Trustee Azuna. I would move that I tackle controversial subjects and communication policies with the administration team. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded that Trustee Ozuna work with the administration team on the academic freedom and the or controversial policies. I keep calling it academic freedom <laughs> policy. That's not what it's called, though. Um, and then um, and the communication policies. Is there? Did you? Did we get a second? Sorry. I second. Oh, thank you. Seconded by Trustee Buffy. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carries five to zero. All right. The second action item up is to uh, approve the recommendation to approve the amendment to the Idaho Fine Arts School. Is there any discussion? Uh, a motion is in order. Uh, Madam Chair, I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve the recommendation to amend the Idaho Fine Arts cell. Thank you. Trustee Cofell, is there a second? Yes, sir. It's been moved by Trustee Cofelt and seconded by Trustee Kloppenstein to approve the Idaho Fine Arts sale. Is there any discussion? Any questions? All right. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carries five to zero. And that moves us into adjournment. Trustee Kloppenstein? <laughs> Are we moved that we adjourn? <laughs> Is there a second? Second. All right. It's been moved and seconded that we adjourn. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carries five to zero. We're adjourned.